Hello guys, this is Vaish. So the 2020 analysis we will try to complete in two more episodes today. So we have already done 80 MCQs. Now 80 to 90 and 90 to 100 will come in two episodes. So whoever is watching this, I guarantee you that you will get high marks or extra marks in the upcoming prelims or whichever prelims you are going to give. And this is going to take you to that uh, mains uh, opportunity, okay? Because everybody wants to write mains at least once. So you will be writing mains if you have been solving all the previous year questions. That too with the elimination techniques which I teach you. Okay, 2016, 17, 18, 19 also. Maybe you have seen it from many other institutes or you have by-hearted the answer. Doesn't matter. Still, if you watch these series, which I have made you will understand how I eliminate even if you don't know that topic if you did not study that subject still you could solve that questions okay so those tricks are there 2020 vice versus UPSC video is there 2021 also it's there so how many questions are directly coming from our test series that also you can watch it here okay so about the test series at the end of this video I'll tell you so today's uh, first question if you see if a particular plant species is placed under schedule 6 of the wildlife protection act okay so first thing is you should know there are uh, six schedules in that one to five of different different uh, protection levels like the first level will have all the protected animals the important ones like maybe elephant or tiger so like that different different levels are there you are not expected to study everything but in the sixth schedule you should know it is plants okay so people usually buy hard that and go but here they asked a detailed question like what type of plants it is okay like uh, when something is placed in that in that list then a license is required to cultivate that plant such a plant cannot be cultivated under any circumstances then it is the GM crops that is the uh, genetically modified crop and such a plant is invasive and harmful to the ecosystem okay so here you have to apply your knowledge if you did not study this okay so GM crops you know how many are there just uh, two three four crops are there which is uh, many of them are not even approved only one of them is approved as of now so that cannot you cannot have a scheduled list and all for that okay this will be something which have more number of plants and it will be a registered list okay which is there since long time so gm crop cannot be an answer that way you have to think okay then here any circumstance meaning whatever you do you cannot do this so there is no such list or no such thing uh, where nothing can be done okay so this also is an extreme statement you can eliminate now a license is required and here it is invasive and harmful to the ecosystem okay so something is invasive or harmful to the ecosystem you will not put under any list and all you will eliminate it all together and you will never even allow its cultivation or nothing will be there okay so that you don't have to put it in a protection thing okay you are putting here so that it can be protected okay so a license is required to cultivate that plant this is the answer for that okay so this it's a very detailed application kind of question if you don't know but if you buy hearted it like now you buy hearted in future in whichever year UPSC asks this in a different way this fact at least you will know okay so a license is required to cultivate that plant okay these are endemic plants where cultivation of specified plants without license is prohibited okay and in the wildlife protection act it is written these things okay the license has to be granted by either chief wildlife warden or any other officer authorized by the state government okay and here again uh, some more information are there uh, nothing in this section shall prevent a person who immediately before the commencement okay maybe like before even this act came into uh, being there may be people who may have been cultivating some plants okay and then they will make this list and put it that doesn't mean you will go and immediately punish him or you don't have the license or you will not take action against him you will be given again some six months time or something so by that time you have to stop that thing or get the license okay grant a license to him so like that all the clauses in detail are mentioned in the wildlife protection act now if at all UPC in the next year ask examples like whether this plant is under Schedule 6 you need to know examples also okay so here if you see this blue vanda red vanda picture plant these are all the things which are placed in the uh, schedule 6 of wildlife protection act so these needs licenses if you need to cultivate them you simply cannot cultivate it okay now question number 82 with reference to the period of gupta dynasty in ancient india the towns ghantashala kadura and chaul were well known as so whether they are ports handling foreign trade their capital cities their places of exquisitive stone art, they are important. Buddhist site. Okay. So, Buddhist site, I know most of you will know almost all the sites. So, this you will eliminate. Okay. Then we have capital city. So, capital cities also you would have heard. This kind of capitals in your life you had never heard. Okay. Capitals, you know, very famous of all the Mahajanapatas or of the Vaisali of, of different different places you would be knowing. Okay. Partly Putra. So, many things are there. So, this also is a thing. Now, places of exquisitive stone art or ports. Okay. So, this again, guesswork is very difficult. But if you have studied this in medieval history and in ancient history, everywhere in the basic textbook itself, Chaul is mentioned. Okay, Chaul, Dhabol are important principal ports where, into which most of the kings in after in different different timeline they were uh, bothered about it and they were paying attention to it. Okay, 
So now you have to do is you have to by heart these three names. Okay, Gantashala, Kadura, and Chaul. All three are principal ports. And you have to also do one thing. Go and check in the map where it is. Okay, like which part of India it is and where are these ports. Okay, because again UPSC will ask the same thing in a different way. Now, which uh, what is the advantage of zero tillage in agriculture? Okay, so many many agriculture questions that do detailed questions came in the next 20 questions which I discuss. I'll show you many many such questions and I'll tell you how to solve it also. So here if you see. Sowing of wheat is possible without burning the residue of previous crop, without the need for nursery of rice saplings, direct uh, planting of paddy seeds in the wet soil is possible. Again, it's still possible. Carbon sequestration is possible. So they are not telling anything like definitely do or surely do and all. Whenever the terms like maybe, uh, must be or uh, it's not must, okay, maybe or uh, there is a chance, there is a possibility. When such things are there, 99% it will be true only. Okay, here also the answer is 1, 2, 3. Okay, because they are telling as a possibility this can be tried out this can be possible okay so these are true but there are exceptions also such question also i will show you in the upcoming mcqs but here in this case everything is true now if you learn the terms okay what is tillage basic tillage it is an agricultural land preparation through mechanical agitation which includes digging stirring and overturning meaning you are making the land ready for sowing the seeds that is tillage now zero tillage or no tillage means what it is used in Rajasthan and other places and all because you know the Delhi pollution issue because of the stubble burning that is the plant residue which is the remaining part after the uh, everything is taken out from that. That burning happens and because of that smoke going into Delhi pollution is happening. So government has been uh, promoting okay like uh, stop burning all these things and you should do something else. That is why they are giving subsidy for happy seeders, zero till uh, uh, seed drill. So these kind of things are given so that it can be done okay. So this without burning the residue of previous crop, sowing anything, sowing a wheat or sowing a rice or whatever, it is possible. Okay, so that is why because it's possible only they are giving these things. Without burning, you have to sow the seed. Okay, so that is possible. So statement one is true. Now, zero tillage is a process where the crop seed will be sown through drillers without prior land preparation and disturbing the soil where previous crop stubbles are present. Okay, zero tillage not only reduces the cost of cultivation, it also reduces the soil erosion, crop duration and irrigation requirement and weed effect which is better than tillage. Okay, so tillage and zero tillage in future any question comes it will be answerable from this particular thing which you see. Now I'll show you more things. Direct seeded rice zero tillage. Okay, that is the second question or the second statement. So DSR is an alternate crop establishment method for rice where seeds are sown directly without raising them in a nursery and can be done in zero tillage condition. So here also it's telling without the need for nursery of rice sapling, uh, direct planting of paddy seeds in the wet soil is possible. Okay, so that is also possible. There is a technique itself, direct seeded rice zero tillage. Okay, so that is the uh, second statement also being uh, true. With that itself, you got the answer one, two, three. No, you will not get because these are two options. Okay, one and two and one, two, three. So third one, if you see carbon sequestration, what is carbon sequestration? Long term storage of carbon dioxide or other forms of carbon to either mitigate or defer global warming, meaning you are storing the carbon dioxide somewhere. Okay, so one method is terrestrial sequestration, which is storing the carbon in soil. So carbon sequestration in soil is possible. Okay, so natural carbon sink and increasing carbon fixation through changing land use practice can enhance carbon uptake in these natural sink. In the zero tillage, we are not disturbing the soil and we are not burning the previous crop uh, residue. So that way it could help in carbon sequestration. So this is the detailed notes of these things. Okay. Now anything in future they ask also, even mains question, you can use these points and uh, write on zero tillage. Now according to India's national policy on biofuel. Okay. National policy on biofuel came in 2018 and UPSC is asking question now. Okay. So which of the following can be used as raw materials for the production of biofuels. Okay. So this also without studying, maybe you cannot do. Okay. Or maybe little bit common sense if you have, you can do. It is actually biofuels is what you're making a fuel kind of thing. So you will need the, uh, all the damaged food items or the rotten food items, uh, vegetables, fruits. These are the things which you use for making biofuel. Okay. The bad ones. So if you see here, damaged wheat grains are there, rotten potato is there and all this sugar related things from that also you can make ethyl, methyl, all these things. So these things should be there in the answer. Two, five, six should be in the answer. But problem is here also 256 is there here also 256 is there okay these two you can eliminate if you know the basics like damaged food items and uh, sugar related items you need then these two will go away okay but again you have to know three and four okay so three is groundnut seeds and this is horse gram so this actually is not there in the answer this is UPSC's made up thing okay so here UPSC have purposely given that also here three places they give three and four 
Okay, so any one if you knew it is not there, you could have eliminated all these three and got the answer directly as 1256. Okay, now I will tell you the detailed policy. National policy on biofuel 2018 does not mention horse gram or groundnut, that is first thing. And bioethanol produced from biomass such as sugar containing materials like sugar cane, sugar beet, sweet sorghum. Starch containing materials like corn, this cassava, rotten potato, algae. So, this heading try to buy heart. Okay, one is sugar containing material, one is starch containing material, then the damaged food items like wheat and broken rice, cellulosic, cellulosic material like uh, bagasse, uh, uh, then this uh, food, uh, sorry, wood waste, agriculture, forest residue, renewable resources. Okay, so all these things can be used for bioethanol. Now, biodiesel is also another term which UPC can ask you. So, a methyl or ethyl ester of fatty acids produced from non edible vegetable oils, acid oil, used cooking oil, animal fat, bio oil. These are the things for biodiesel in case in future they ask. Okay. So, this is what is mentioned in the National Policy on Biofuel 2018. Now, question number 85, a little difficult one. Which of the, one of the, which one of the following statements is best describing the term social cost of carbon? Okay. This type also is nowadays coming in UPSC where a CSAT kind of big ABCD thing they will give and everything will look same also. So, it will be difficult for you unless you know. Else you can skip this question. Okay. In ABCD questions, don't take chance. Okay. Always take chance when there are many statements like 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. When there are statements, you can eliminate. But here you have to hardcore know the fact of it. Okay. So, here if it is social cost of carbon, it is a monetary thing. Okay. And it is defined by big, big organizations like OECD and all. So, that also I will show you. So, here contribution of an individual person uh, to carbon footprint. Then effects put in by a climate refugee to adapt to a life. So again, this is like individual persons, what they do that is mentioning. Okay, this is actually not the answer. Then here, requirement of fossil fuel for a country to provide goods and services to the citizens based on the burning of those fuels. Okay, so this much detail when you see, you will think it is correct, but it is wrong. Okay, answer is this one. One ton of carbon when you emit. Okay, so how much damage will happen? That is the social cost. Okay, in monetary value, that is the social cost. It is a one ton of carbon emissions in a year uh, causing damage. Okay. So, social cost of carbon, it is the marginal cost of impact caused by ex emitting one extra ton of greenhouse gas or carbon dioxide at any point of time inclusive of non-market impacts on the environment and human health. This is the basic definition, googled definition of social cost of carbon. Okay. So, the purpose of putting this price of one ton of this thing is to aid policy makers or the legislatures in evaluating whether a policy designed to curb climate change is justified. Okay. Whether their policies are in line with all these things to check that they will check how much damage is caused by one ton, one, one ton emission of carbon dioxide. Now, in microeconomics, there is a definition for it. Social cost is a concept associated with some type of negative externality, meaning something negative happens, meaning a factory is emitting smokes or anything. So, that it causes a negative externality. Okay. If something is giving positive thing, it is called positive externality, but this is negative. Okay. So, there are many costs which you don't even count. Okay. Like because of the smoke, maybe you are getting little respiratory diseases and all these things, but for that your company is not giving to you, giving you extra salary and all. For that, you will have medical bills, you will have other things, your dress will get bad, you will have extra washing bills, laundry bills. There are many things which happen personally, but it's all causing because of the factory okay but you are not counting it in your salary or any place you are not getting it okay so this does not come in the calculation and you are getting those extra washing bills and medical bills so these are called social cost okay so oecd also has a definition for this which is the same as what upsc have asked the net present value of climate change impact over the next 100 years or longer of one additional ton of carbon emitted to the atmosphere today Okay, in the next 100 years, what impact will happen because of one additional ton of carbon? That is the social cost of carbon. So, this is a detailed notes for this particular topic. Now, with reference to pulse production in India, consider the following statement. This is a very easy one because of the options. Okay, black gram can be cultivated as both kharif and rabi. Maybe you know, maybe you don't know. Okay, green gram alone, okay, that is your moong dal or green dal which you have in your home and all, accounts for nearly half of the pulse production. Okay, you know, these many pulses are there and you are telling green gram is... Half of 50 percent of production is a blunder statement. Okay, so this alone, if you eliminate this 2, 2, 2, this will go away and you will get the answer as one only. Okay, without even reading the third statement. This and all directly you can apply. Okay, in the exam hall, don't even think your basic common sense what tells you to just eliminate it. Don't think like how can three options just like that go away. Maybe I'm doing something wrong. Don't do that. If your gut feeling is telling you, common sense is telling you, it will be correct. But if you keep overthinking, then you will feel maybe this statement is also correct. Okay, don't do that. Now, in the last three decades, while the production of carib pulses have increased, the production of rabi pulses have decreased. Okay, the rabi ones actually has increased over the time. Okay, so this is a reverse way it is correct. So, this is a wrong statement. Okay, 
and this is a correct statement it can be done both because not only both there is one more season which we have the carry frabi and zaid season all three seasons you can grow pulses that is why government is promoting many lot of pulse missions okay in 2018 i think it was declared indian year of pulses or something even internationally we have pushed it so pulses are very uh, important for your health also for the farmers also so pulses share and many details i'll show you factual details which in the future you can use for prelims as well as mains okay so gram is the most dominant pulse around 40% okay gram and this tur or arhar is the like next one 15 to 20 percent after that only this urad black gram black this are same okay all these are urad only and this is the moong green gram this at 8 to 10 percentage eat okay so it's just 8 to 10 percentage not 50 percentage like upsc have told okay so that is the order of pulse share and production now rabi pulses contribute more than 60 percentage share okay so rabi is always increasing okay so this is a wrong statement now extra facts i'll tell you india is the largest producer consumer and importer okay even though we produce and we uh, produce a lot in the world we are consuming it also so it's not enough for us so we are importing it also okay so 25 percent of global production is by us 27 percent of world consumption is by us and 14 percent of import is also by us so we are the largest in all three terms of pulses now pulse account for around 20 percentage of area under food grains and contribute around 7 to 10 percentage of the total food grain production in the country okay 20% area it's taking and 7 to 10% total food grain production it is the share okay so this is the pulse uh, uh, story okay whatever you need and one more fact is the five states so in the map imagine okay Madhya Pradesh is in the center from there uh, to the left if you take it is Maharashtra okay to the uh, left again north you take uh, Rajasthan in the right you take is Uttar Pradesh then again come back here Karnataka okay below it so it's all in the kind of central region okay the highest pulse production states now this again is a very easy and repeated question by upsc okay the crop is subtropical in nature a hard frost is injurious to it it requires at least 210 frost free days and 50 to 100 centimeter rainfall for its growth a light well drained soil capable of retaining moisture is ideally suited for the cultivation so identify the crop this is basic six standard geography uh, question okay in the ncrt geography six standard 12 standard and every book you study this is written okay as cotton it, only this word was enough 210 frost free days just like that it is mentioned in all your textbooks and if you don't have that if you are a vice student plus please take this revision chart and before your day of prelims okay simply read this it will take hardly uh, less than two minutes for you okay in two minutes you are studying the seven crops all the conditions for it the soil the leading locations and from this a direct question is being asked by upsc okay 210 frost free days light rainfall bright sunshine high temperature okay and in soil is black and alluvial soil leading is china usa india pakistan so cotton is asked next year maybe they'll ask about millets or maybe rice or wheat or golden fiber jute anything they can ask okay tea already they asked i think last year so like that they are going on asking simple simple things from your ncrt please buy heart it from basic sources okay now this again is a very uh, silly question for which much explanation need not be given with reference to solar water uh, pumps consider the following statement solar pump can be used for running surface pump but not submersible pump solar pump can be used for running centrifugal pump but not the ones with piston so there is nothing like that okay solar power and all it can be used for whatever you want uh, upcoming technology or a renewable technology and all you can put for whatever pump you want so there is nothing to uh, uh, like specify and tell okay this is possible that is not possible so here answer is uh, both are wrong statement because it is used to run all of them okay the most common are the centrifugal pump the multi-stage pump borehole pump and helical pump so this one just with your common sense you can admit and everybody should have got two marks for this okay please don't think like i did not study solar pump or pumps so it's a very difficult topic go for these kind of questions you are going to get into that cutoff list now next one with reference to the current trend in cultivation of sugarcane this again is a very difficult agriculture question so they are asking something about this settling technique okay so the entire history of that i'll tell you here now so uh, the state before reading the statement now we'll see what is this uh, settling uh, technique transplanting sugarcane single bud but chip settling okay this if you google an article will come this can save seed cane requirement up to 80 percentage besides providing healthy plants and good field establishment this can save this much thing okay that is why this is useful it can save the seed cane requirement it is less expensive and labor saving in comparison with the conventional set planting okay this new settling technique is better than the conventional technique now conventional method what you do it requires seven to eight tons of seed cane per hectare and this is the main reason for slow rate of seed and varietal replacement sugarcane being a long duration crop and heavy biomass producer which we saw in the previous question biomass 
requires about this much water. Okay, so it needs lot of water, it needs lot of seed. These are the conventional problems. So keeping in mind all these things, our one of the body, the ICAR, Indian Council of Agriculture Research Sugar Breeding Institute, they have developed this integrated sugar cultivation model called Settling Transplant Technology (STT). Okay, so I am teaching you this because in future again they will take and ask these kind of uh, topics. Okay, which are very uh, not conventional. Only for forest service people, these are important. Now components of this model are listed below. Okay, what all will be there in this? High yielding and better quality varieties. Raising and transplanting of settling derived from single bud sets or bud chips. Subsurface drip irrigation and fertigation. Fertigation, one more question is there in the upcoming MCQs you will see. Wider rope planting, intercropping, trash mulching, multiple ratooning, mechanization. So these are all the different different uh, methods or components of this particular settling model. Okay. And one more topic I will tell you, tissue culture. What is the meaning of tissue culture? Any par part of the plant is taken out and it is grown in a test tube. So, this tissue culture or vegetative propagation is a subset of this tissue culture. Okay, this vegetative propagation means it's a subset of tissue culture in case UPSC asks you in future. So, it can be used to germinate and grow these settlings which can be transplanted in the field later. Scientists have succeeded in culturing many of these uh, plants through this tissue culture. Okay, meaning settling is possible through the tissue culture method. Now, this much I showed you. Now, we will see the MCQ of what UPSC have asked. One good thing if you see here, there is no statement option called 1, 2, 3, 4. So, something has to be wrong. Okay, some of the statement has to be wrong. So, we see here, a substantial saving in seed material is made when budsim settlings are raised in a nursery and transplanted in the main field. Okay, here we told, because conventional method, we have lot of uh, seeds being used. Here, that will save it. Okay, so that saving is what they have asked. It is saving a lot of seed material. So, one is true. So, when you need one, this option uh, D goes away because it is uh, uh, 2, 3, 4. And this one goes away, it is 3 only. So, either it is 1 and 2 or 1 and 4. Okay, meaning 3 is, they are themselves are telling it as wrong. Okay, the fourth statement, sugarcane can be cultivated using settling prepared from tissue culture. Okay, so tissue culture, I told you, banana, sugarcane, potato, they have already proven it is possible. So, answer here is 1 and 4. Now, statement 2 and 3 is wrong and they have reversed something. Okay, here if you see, when direct planting of sets is done, the germination percentage is better with single budded sets as compared to sets with many bud. Okay, so they are telling the single one is better than many. Okay, but this is actually the reverse. The germination percentage is better for many buds compared to the single one. Okay, that is one thing. Now, second one is the same thing they have done. If bad weather conditions prevail when sets are directly planted, now the single budded sets have better survival as compared to Larger set. So here they are telling single bud have high germination. Here they are telling single budded have high survival. Both are wrong. Both are reverse. Okay. The one with multiple sets or large set, they have higher germination percentage and they have higher survival rate. Okay. That is what they have reversed. So these two, as I told, if you it's a very difficult topic. So I'm just explaining you. These two are wrong. They have reversed it. But one and four is true. It will save seed material and it can be done through tissue culture. Okay. Hope it's clear. Now, last question for today. In the context of India, which one of the following is considered to be a practice of eco-friendly agriculture? Okay, again, a lot of agriculture question. So, crop diversification, legume intensification, tensiometer use, vertical farming. This is difficult again because of the option and because of what UPC have decided. Ideally, my answer also, Google answers also, everybody's answer was 1, 2, 3, 4. But now when the answer key came, answer is 1, 2, 3 only. They have not put vertical farming in the option. But most of us and most of us thought like, like it is an eco-friendly technique. Okay. And if you Google also, it will come. It's an eco-friendly technique. Okay, it saves a lot of water and nutrients and all these things. But UPSC has decided to go with the answer 1, 2, 3. So, you also have to buy hard the answer 1, 2, 3. Okay. So, crop diversification proved to be a paramount of importance in mitigating the environmental problem arising out of monoculture. Inclusion of certain crops has been found to reduce many weeds and many other herbicide uses, many things. So, it is eco-friendly. Okay, so crop diversification is obviously there. Answer is one. Sorry, answer, answer has one. Now, legumes improve soil fertility through the symbiotic association with microorganisms such as rhizobium. You know, rhizobium bacteria, nitrogen fixation. These are other basic biology terms. Okay, so all these things will help in making the soil better. Okay, for the crops, it is better because nitrogen fixation will happen. Plants can take in the nitrogen better. So, legumes is there. So, legume intensification also is eco-friendly. Now, next one. Understanding of soil moisture, one could save huge quantity of water and energy by knowing when and how much water is required by the crop. 
So when you use this tensiometer, okay, which is typically a sealed water filled tube with a ceramic porous cup and vacuum gauge at the top, this is the definition of a tensiometer, okay. This could help in providing estimates of soil moisture, okay. So tensiometer, which has this all this tube and everything, it will help us understand the soil moisture. So you will know how much water is required. So that also is a eco friendly technique, okay. So 1, 2, 3 is definitely there the answer, but the options if you see. It has four also here. So that is why we have the confusion. Now, UPSC does not include vertical farm in the answer. Vertical farm is actually an adopted solution where land resource is very scarce and uh, urbanization is, uh, is a threat and all. So you can do a vertical way of farming outside the buildings and all. So it is a land saving method. Okay. So it can be used for different different types of cultivation, rooftop cultivation and all. And even Google uh, says that uh, if you use this vertical farming, it uses significantly less water and pesticides than traditional methods. So ideally, my answer also should be 1, 2, 3, 4. But I rechecked it now again before the video. Question number 90 of set A. Answer they have given is uh, A. Okay, they have not given D, they have given A. So you have to by heart this that vertical farming is not under eco-friendly technique. It is only a land uh, saving uh, technique. Okay. So these are the 10 questions. I'll come up with the next video and test series. You have to come and enroll if you are enrolling, uh, if you are giving the exam on June 5. Questions I am guaranteeing you will directly come from these papers. It is always coming. The current affairs, the economics, the polity, then uh, the maps and environment and then spectrum. From this every year I am claiming 30 to 40 questions every year without any issues. So this year also it will come because these are static portions and it will come. Okay. So contact us in WhatsApp or email and we will tell you how to enroll. Okay. So if you are serious aspirant, do it. If 2023-24 later aspirants who have just started, there is time, there is more test series batches will come. You can join to that. Okay. So thank you and have a nice day.